My house to the gutter! I host of the garter. <laughs> what says my bully rook? Thou art an emperor, Kaiser, Caesar, and Fiza. <laughs> <laughs> well, sirs, I'm almost out at heel. Well, then let chill blinds and so. Oh, there is no remedy. I must coney catch. I must shift. Young ravens must have their food. Which of you know Ford of this town? I know the man. He is a substance good. Well, my honest lads, I'll tell you what I'm about. Two yards or more! <laughs> <laughs> no quips now, Pistol. I am indeed in the waste two yards about. But I am now about no waste. I'm about thrift. Briefly, I do mean to make love to Ford's wife. I spy entertainment in her. <laughs> she discourses, she carves, she gives the leer of invitation. Mm. I am Sir John Falstaffs. <laughs> now, the report goes she has all the rule of a husband's purse and he hath a legion of angels. <laughs> I have writ me here a letter to her, <laughs> and here another to Mistress Page who even now did give me good eyes to examine my parts <laughs> with the most judicious orlades. Sometimes the beam of her view gilded my foot, sometimes my portly belly. <laughs> let the sun on the dunghill shine. <laughs> I thank thee for thy humour. <laughs> oh, she did so coarse all my exterior with such a greedy intention that the appetite of her eye did seem to scorch me up like a burning glass. <laughs> Here's another letter to her. She bears the purse too. She is a region in Guyana, all gold and bounty. <laughs> I shall be cheaters to them both, and they shall be exchequers to me. They shall be my East and West Indies. I will trade to them both. <laughs> Go bear thou this letter to Mistress Page, and thou this to Mistress Ford. <laughs> we will thrive, lads, we will thrive. Shall I, Sir Pandarus of Troy, become, and by my side wear steel? Well, then let Lucifer take all. I'll run thou base letter. Here, take the humour letter. I shall keep the heavier of reputation. Hold, sirrah. Bear thou these letters tightly. Sail like my pinnace to these golden shores. Rogues, hence, avaunt, vanish like hailstones. Goo, trudge, plod away on the hoof. Seek shelter, pack. <laughs> False stuff shall learn the humour of the age. French thrift, you rogues. Myself and skirted page. Let vultures gripe thy guts, base Phrygian Turk. I have operations which be humours of revenge. Wilt thou revenge? By working in a star. By wit or by steel? With both the humours I. <sighs> I'll discuss the humour of this love to Paige. And I to Ford shall eke unfold, and false tops violet vile. His dove will prove, his gold will hold, his soft couch to fire! <laughs> <laughs> What? Have I escaped the love letters in the holiday time of my beauty to be subject for them now? Ask me no reason why I love you. For though love use reason for his physician, he admits him not for his counsellor. You are not young, no more am I. Go to then, there's sympathy. You are merry, so am I, ha ha. Then there's more sympathy. You love sack, and so do I. Would you desire better sympathy? Let it suffice thee, Mistress Page, at the least, if the love of a soldier can suffice, that I love thee. I will not say pity me, tis not a soldier-like phrase, but I say love me. By me, thine own true knight, by day or night, or any kind of light, with all his might, for thee to fight. John Falstaff? 
What a herod of jury is this! O oh, wicked world! How shall I be revenged on him? For revenged I will be, as sure as his guts are made of puddings. Mistress Page! Oh, oh trust me, I was going to your house. And trust me, I was coming to you! You look very ill, what is it? If I would but go to hell for an eternal moment or so, I could be knighted. What thou liest, Sir Alice Ford. We burn daylight. Here, read. Perceive how I might be knighted. I shall think the worse of fat men as long as I have an eye to make difference of men's liking. <laughs> what tempest, I trow, through this whale with so many tons of oil in his belly ashore at Windsor? How shall I be revenged on him? I think the best way were to entertain him with hope until the wicked fires of lust have melted him in his own grease. <laughs> have you ever heard the like? Letter for letter, but that the name of Page and Ford differ, this is the twin brother of thy letter. But let thine inherit first, for I protest mine never shall. I warrant he hath a thousand of these letters, each writ with a blank space for a different name. Why, it is the very same. The very hand, the very words. What do they think of us? Nay, I know not. It makes me almost ready to wrangle with mine own honesty. I will entertain myself as one not acquainted with all. Unless he know some strain in me that I know not in myself, he would never have boarded me in this fury. Oh, boarding, call you it. <laughs> I'll be sure to keep him above deck. <laughs> so will I. But let's be revenged on him. Let's call a meeting. Let's lead him on in his suit. And until he hath pawned his horses to mine host of the guard. <laughs> Nay, I will consent to act any villainy against him that may not sully the chariness of our honesty. <laughs> that my husband saw this letter. It would give him eternal food to his jealousy. And look where he comes. And with my good man, too, who is as far from jealousy as I would give him cause. And I hope that is an unmeasurable mm. distance. Well, you are the happier woman. <laughs> Let's consult against this greasy knight. Come hither. Well, I hope it be not so. Hope is but a curtle dog in some affairs. Sir John affects thy wife. Why, sir? My wife is not young. Oh, he woos both high and low, both rich and poor, both young and old, and uh, one with another. <laughs> Ford, prepend! Love my wife. With liver burning hot, prepend or go thou. Oh, oh, yes, is that name. What name, sir? Ah, the pawn, I say farewell. <laughs> now, take heed, have open eye, for thieves do foot by night. Believe it, Page, he speaks sense. I will be patient. I will find out this. And this is true. He loves your wife. There's the long and the short of it. My name is Corporal Nim. I speak and I vouch. Tis true. My name is Nim, and Forster <laughs> loves your wife. I do. <laughs> How now, Meg? Will I go thou, George? Oh. Hark you. How now, sweet Frank? <clears throat> Why art thou melancholy? I melancholy. I am not melancholy. Oh, Get you home. Go. Oh, faith, thou hast some crotchets in thy head. <laughs> <laughs> now will you go, Mistress Page? Have with you. You will come to dinner, George. Look who comes yonder. She shall be our messenger to this paltry night. Trust me, I thought on her. She'll fit it. Come within with us and see. We'll have an hour's talk with you. How now, Master Ford? You heard what that knave said to me, did you not? Yes. And you heard what the other told me? Well, well do you think there is truth in them? No, hang them, slaves. I do not think the knight would offer it. But these that accuse him and his intent toward our wives are a yoke of his discarded men. Very rogues, now they be out of service. Uh, were they his men? Yeah, marry were they. Well, I like it not the better for that. Does he lie at the garter? Aye, marry does he. If he should intend this voyage towards my wife, I would turn her loose to him. What he gets more of her than sharp words, let it lie on my head. 
Well, I do not misdoubt my wife, but I would be loath to turn them together. A man may be too confident. I cannot have thus on my head. Though Paige be a secure fool who stands so firmly by his wife's frailty, yet I cannot put off my opinion so easily. She was in his company at Paige's house, and what they made there I know not. Well, I will look further into it. And I have a disguise to sound Falstaff. How now, mine host? How now, Bully Rook? Thou art a gentleman. I'll give you a pottle of burnt sack to give me recourse to Falstaff to tell him my name is... Brooke. But only for a jest. If I find her honest, I lose not my labour. If I find her otherwise, tis labour well bestowed. Thy hand, Bully. Thou shalt have egress and regress. Said I well? And thy name shall be Brook. Yes. Worship, good morrow. Oh, good morrow, good wife. Oh, not so, ain't please your worship. Oh, good maid then. <laughs> I'll be sworn, as my mother was the first hour I was born. No, I do believe the swearer. What with me? There is one, Mistress Ford, sir. She's a good creature. <laughs> Lord, Lord, your <laughs> masters are wanting. Well, heaven forgive you and all of us, I say. Uh, uh, Mistress Ford? Mary, <coughs> this is the short and the long of it. You have brought him to such a canary, says just wonderful. The best courtier of them all in the court lay at Windsor could never have brought her to such a canary. Ooh. Yet there have been knights and lords and gentlemen with their coaches. Coach after coach, letter after letter, gift after gift, I warrant you. And so smelling so sweetly, or musk, and all rustling in silk and gold, and in such elegant terms, and in the best and the fairest of wine and sugar that would have won any woman. But, oh, yet they could never get an eye wink of her. But what says she to me? Oh, well, uh, she has received your letter, uh -huh. for which she gives you a thousand thanks, oh. and gives to notify, come closer, gives to notify that her husband will be absent from his house between ten and eleven. Ten and eleven? I forsooth. Oh. And then you may come and see the picture. The picture she says you know of. Oh! <laughs> Master Ford, her husband will be from home. Alas, the sweet woman leads a very ill life with oh. him. He's a very jealousy man. She leads a very frampled life with him, dear heart. Ten and eleven. Uh, woman, commend me to her. I will not fail her. Ah, oh, why you uh. sayest well. <gasps> but I have another messenger to your worship. Mistress Paige hath her hearty commendations to you too. And let me tell you in your ear, she's as sumptuous a civil modest wife and bade me tell you that her husband is seldom from oh, home. Well, but she hopes there will come a time. <laughs> no, I never saw a woman so dote upon a man. Surely you have charms, yes, indeed. <laughs> no, not I, I assure thee. Setting aside the attractions of my good parts, <laughs> I have no other charms. <laughs> Blessings on your heart for it. Uh, but I, I pray thee, tell me this. Um, have Mistress Ford and Mistress Page acquainted each other how they love me? Surely that were a jest indeed. <laughs> they have not such little grace. <laughs> That were a trick indeed. This news distracts me. What sayest thou, old Jack? Go thy ways. I'll make more of thy old body than I have done. Will they yet look after thee? Will thou, after the expense of so much money, be now a gainer? Well, good body, I thank thee. Let them say it is grossly done, so it be fairly done. No matter. Sir John. There's one Master Brook below would fain speak with you and be acquainted with you, and essential worship morning's draught of sack. Hmm. Brook is his name? Aye, sir. 
Oh, call him in. Aye, sir. Such brooks are welcome to me that overflow such liquor. <laughs> ah, Mistress Ford and Mistress Page. I compass thee. <laughs> Go to, fire. Bless you, sir. And you, sir, would you speak with me? Sir, I am a gentleman that have spent much. My name is Brook. Oh, Master Brook, I desire more acquaintance of you. Uh, but, Sir John, I sue for yours not to charge you, for I must let you understand I think myself in better plight for a lender than you are. The witch hath emboldened me to this unseasoned intrusion, for as they say, if money go before, all ways do lie open. Well, money is a good soldier, sir, and will on. Troth, <laughs> and I have a bag of money here that troubles me. Oh. If you will help to bear it, Sir John, take all, or half, for the easing me of the carriage. Yeah, sir, I, I know not how I may deserve to be your porter. I will tell you, sir, if you will give me the hearing. Well, speak, Master Brook. I'll be glad to be your servant. Sir, I hear you are a scholar. Mm. I will be brief with you, and you are a man long known to me, though I have never had so means of desire to make myself acquainted with you. I shall discover a thing unto you, wherein I very much lay open mine own imperfection. Very well, sir. Uh, proceed. Hmm. <laughs> there is a gentlewoman in this town. Her husband's name is Ford. Well, sir? I have long loved her, and I protest to you bestowed much on her. I have pursued her as love hath pursued me, which hath been on the wing of all occasions. Yet whatsoever I have merited, either in my mind or in my means, mead, I am sure I have received none. Have you received no promise of satisfaction at her hands? Never. Have you importuned her to such a purpose? No, never. Well, of what quality was your love, then? Well, like a fair house built on another man's ground, so that I lost my edifice for mistaking the place where I erected it. <sighs> to what purpose have you unfolded this to me? Oh, you are a gentleman of excellent breeding, oh. admirable discourse of great admittance, authentic in your place and person, oh. generally allowed for your many warlike, court-like, and learned preparations. Oh, sir! <laughs> oh, believe it, for you know it. There is money. Spend it, spend it, spend more, spend all I have. Only give me so much of your time of it in exchange to lay an amiable siege to the honesty of this Ford's wife. Use your art of wooing. <laughs> Win her consent to you. If any man may, you may as soon as any. Would it apply well to the vehemency of your affection if I were to win what you would enjoy? Methinks you prescribed yourself very preposterously. Oh, understand my drift. She dwells so securely on the excellency of her honour that the folly of my soul dares not present itself. She's too bright to be looked against. Now, could I come to her with detection in my hand? My desires had instance an argument to commend themselves. I could then drive her from the ward of her purity, yeah. her yeah. reputation, her marriage vow, and a thousand other of her defences that are so embattled against me now. <laughs> what say you to it, Sir John? Master Brook, first I will make bold with your money. <laughs> Next, give me your hand. And last, as I am a gentleman, you shall, if you will, <laughs> Enjoy Ford's wife. <laughs> I shall be with her between ten and eleven, but at that time the jealous, rascally knave husband will be forth. Come you to me at night, you shall know how I speed. <laughs> I am blessed in your acquaintance, sir. Do you know, Ford? <laughs> Hang him! <laughs> Poor cuckoldy knave! <laughs> I know him not. I do him wrong to call him poor, for they say the jealous wittily knave has masses of money, to which the wife seems to be well favoured. I shall use her as the uh, key to the cuckoldy rogue's coffer, and there's my harvest home. <laughs> oh, I would you knew Ford, sir, so that you may avoid him if you saw him. <laughs> Hang him, mechanical salt butter rogue. I shall stare him out of his wits. I shall awe him with me cudgel. It shall hang like a meteor over the cuckold's horns. Master Brook, thou shalt know that I will predominate over the peasant, and thou shalt lie with his wife. Come to me soon at night. 
<laughs> what a damned Epicurean rascal is this? My heart is ready to crack with impatience. Who says this is improvident jealousy? My wife has sent for him. The hour is fixed. The match is made. Would any man have thought this? See the hell of having a false woman? My bed shall be abused, my coffers ransacked, and my reputation gnawn at. And I shall not only receive this villainous wrong, but stand under the adoption of abominable terms, and by him that hath done me wrong. Terms, names, cockold, whittled, cockold. Page is an ass, a secure ass. He will trust his wife, he will not be jealous. I will rather trust a Fleming with my butter, an Irishman with my aquavite bottle, or a thief to walk my ambling gelding than my wife with herself. Then she plots, then she ruminates, then she devises. Well, what they think in their hearts they will affect. They will break their hearts, for they will affect. God be praised for my jealousy. Eleven o'clock is the hour. I will prevent this. I will detect my wife, be revenged on Falstaff, <laughs> and laugh at Paige. Well, I must be about it. Better three hours too soon than a minute too late. Fie, fie, fie. Cockled, cockled, cockled. Come, come. Here, come on. <laughs> Here, set it down here. Give your men the orders. We must be brief. <laughs> Mary, as I told you before, you two be ready here, and when I suddenly call you, come forth and take this basket on your shoulders. That done, trudge with it in all haste to ditch it mead and empty it into the muddy ditch close by the ten side. <clears throat> Here comes little Robin. <laughs> My master Sir John has come in at your back door, Mistress Ford, and hath request your company. You little jack o lantern have thou been true to us? Aye, uh, aye, be sworn. My master knows not of your being here, and hath threatened to put me into everlasting liberty if I tell you of it, for he swears he'll turn me away. Oh. Thou art a good boy. I'll go hide me. Do so. Go tell the master I'm alone. <laughs> Mistress Page! Remember you, your cue. I warrant if I do not act it, hiss me. Go to, then. <laughs> we'll use this unwholesome humidity, <laughs> this gross watery pumpkin. <laughs> we'll teach him to know turtles from jays. <laughs> Have I caught thee, my <laughs> heavenly jewel? <laughs> Why, now let me die, for I have lived long enough. This is the period of my ambition. Oh, this blessed hour. Oh, sweet Sir John. <laughs> oh, Mistress Ford, I cannot cog. I cannot prate, Mistress Ford. <laughs> now shall I sin in my wish. I would that thy husband were dead. <gasps> I will speak it before the best lord. I would make thee... My lady. I, your lady, Sir John, alas. <laughs> I would be a pitiful lady. Oh. Let the court of France show me such another. I see how thine eye would emulate the diamond. Thou would make an absolute courtier. What made me love thee? Let that persuade thee there is something extraordinary in thee. Come, I cannot cog and say that thou art this and that, like many of these lifting hawthorn buds that come like women in men's apparel and ugh, smell like Bucklersberry in simple time. No, I cannot. But I love thee, none but thee. And thou deservest it. Well, <laughs> heaven knows how I love you. <laughs> and you shall one day find it. <laughs> oh, keep in that mind, I'll deserve it. Oh, no, nay, I must tell you so you do. <laughs> Else I could not be in that mind. <laughs> <laughs> Mistress Ford, Mistress Page is at the door, sweating oh. and blowing and looking wildly. I need to speak with you presently. Oh, she shall not see me. I'll ensconce me behind the arras. <laughs> Pray you do so. She's a very tattling woman. <laughs> What's the matter? How now? Oh, Mistress Ford, what have you done? You are overthrown. You are shamed. You are undone forever. What's the matter, good Mistress Page? Oh, well a day, Mistress Ford. Married to such an honest man to give him cause of such suspicion. What cause of suspicion? What cause of suspicion? Out upon you. How am I mistook in you? Why, alas, what's the matter? Your husband comes hither. 
to search for a gentleman he says is here in the house now by your consent, taking ill advantage of his assents. You are undone. What shall I do? There is a gentleman, <gasps> my dear friend, and I fear not my own shame <sighs> as much as his peril. I had rather a thousand pounds. He were out of the house. You are shamed. Your husband comes nigh. Can you think of a conveyance for in the house you cannot hide him? What a woman are you? Oh, look, a basket. Oh. <laughs> if he be of any reasonable stature, we could creep him in there, throw foul linen on him and take him for bucking. Or is it whiting time? Get your men to send him to Datchet Mead. He's too big to go in there. What shall I do? Oh, let me see it. Oh, let me see it. Oh, let me see it. Oh, <laughs> Eileen, Eileen. Sir my John Falstaff, are these your letters, sir? Oh, I love thee. Help me away. I'll keep Come, here. boy. I'll Come, help. Get... Cover your master. Oh. Give your men the orders. John, Robert, John. You dissembling knight. <laughs> Take up these clothes here, quickly. Carry them to the lawn dress that that should be. <laughs> I pray you come near. If I suspect without cause, why then make sport at me? Let me be your chest. I deserve it. How now? Whither bear you this? Uh, to the lodges, forsooth. Why, what do you have to do with where they bear it? <laughs> you were best meddled with buck washing. Buck? I would I could wash myself of the buck. <laughs> 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 And of the season two it shall appear. <laughs> I have dreamed tonight. And I will tell you my dream. Here, here. Here are my keys. Ascend my chambers. Search, seek, find out. I warrant well unkennel the fox. <clears throat> Let me stop this way first. Rogue, show thyself. Good Master Ford, be contented. You wrong yourself too much. True, Master Page. Up! You shall see sport anon. Follow me. Okay. <laughs> oh, is there not a double excellency in this? Oh, I know not which pleases me more, whether my husband is deceived or Sir John. <laughs> and what a taking in was he when your husband asked who was in the basket. I have half a mind he's in need of washing. <laughs> so throwing him into the water will do him a benefit. <laughs> Hang him, dishonest rascal. Oh, I should, I think my husband has some special suspicion of Falstaff's being here. I've not seen him so gross in his jealousy till now. I lay a plot to that. We shall yet have more tricks on Falstaff. His disseminating disease will not answer this medicine. Mm. Well, sh shall we send that foolish carrion mistress quickly to him and excuse his throwing ah, into the water? Surely we will. And give him another hope yes. to betray him to another punishment. Yes. Call for him in the morning, eight o'clock, to make amends. Well, I cannot find him. Maybe the knave bragged of all he could not compass. Heard you that? <laughs> you use me well, Master Ford, do you? Aye, I do so. Oh, heaven make you better than your thoughts. Amen. You do yourself a mighty wrong, Master Ford. Aye, aye, I must bear it. Fie, fie, Master Ford, are you not ashamed? What spirit, what devil has suggested this imagination? I would not have your distemper in this kind for the wealth of Windsor Castle. Tis my fault, Master Page. <laughs> I suffer for it. Mm. I pray you pardon me. <laughs> come, wife. <laughs> come, Mistress Page. Pardon me. I pray heartily. Pardon me. Let's go in. I do invite you tomorrow morning to my house to breakfast. After, we'll a birding together. I have a fine hawk for the bush. Shall it be so? Anything. Fetch me a quarter of sack and put a toast in. Oh. Oh. Have I lived to be carried in a basket? Oh. 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 A 
I'm thrown into the Thames like a barrel of butcher's offal. You know, uh, uh, you. If I be served such another trick, I'll have my brains taken out and buttered and given to a dog for a New Year's gift. The rogues slighted me into the river with as little remorse as they would have drowned a blind bitch's puppies, 15 of the litter. Do you know by my size have I a kind of alacrity in sinking? If the bottom were as deep as hell, I should down. I had been drowned, but the shore was shelvy and shallow. The kind of death that I abhor. Well, the, the water swells a man. What a thing I should have been had I been swelled. I should have been a mountain of mummy. Here's Mistress Quickly, sir, to speak with you. Oh, let me pour in some sack into this Thames water. My belly's as cold as if I'd swallowed solid snowballs of pills to cool the brain. By your leave, I cry your mercy. Good worship. Oh. Tomorrow. <laughs> Take away these chalices. Go and brew me a bottle of sack finely. With egg, sir? Simple of itself. I'll no pull at sperm in my brewage. Mary, I come to your worship from Mistress Ford. Mistress Ford? <laughs> I've had Ford enough. I was thrown into the Ford. I'd be belly full of Ford. A lesser day, dear heart, was not her fault. She does so take on with her men. Mm. They mistook their erection. Well, I did mine. To build upon a foolish woman's promise. Well, she laments a day for it, sir, that it would yearn your heart to see it. Her husband goes this morning a birding, and she desires you once more to come to her between eight and nine. I must carry her word quickly. She will make you amends, I warrant. Well, I, I, I will visit her. And I'll tell her so. I'd better think what a man is. Let her consider his frailty and then judge of my merit. I will tell her. Well, be gone. I will not miss her. <laughs> Peace be with you, sir. I marvel I hear not of Brook. He sent me word to stay within. Like his money well. <laughs> oh, here he comes. Bless you, sir. Now, Master Brook, you have come to know what hath passed between me and Ford's wife. That indeed, Sir John, is my business. Well, Master Brook, I will not lie to you. I was at her house the hour she appointed me. And how sped you, sir? Oh, very ill-favouredly, Master Brook. How so? Did she change her determination? Oh, oh no, Master Brook. But the, the Peking call new to her husband, Master Brook, uh, dwelling in a continual larum of jealousy, comes me in the instant of our encounter. After we had embraced, mm, kissed, mm, and protested, oh, and as it were, uh, spoke the prologue of our comedy. And at his heels, the rabble of his companions, uh, thither instigated and provoked by his distemper, and forsooth to search the house for his wife's love. What? While you were there? While I was there. And did he search for you and could not find you? You shall hear. As good luck would have it, comes in one mistress page. Uh, gives intelligence of Ford's approach, and in her invention and Ford's wife's distraction, they conveyed me into a book basket. A book basket? By the Lord, a book basket. <laughs> Rammed me in with foul shirts and smocks and socks and foul stockings and greasy napkins. Oh, that master brook. There was the rankest compound of villainous smell that ever offended nostril. And how long lay you there? Yeah, you shall hear. <laughs> Master Brooke, what I have suffered to bring this woman to evil for your good. <clears throat> Being thus crammed in the basket, a couple of Ford's knaves, his hinds, were called forth by their mistress to carry me in the name of foul clothes to Datchet Lane. They put me on their shoulders, met the jealous knave their master in the door, who asked them once or twice what they had in the basket. <laughs> I quaked for fear, lest the lunatic knave would have searched it, but fate, ordaining that he should be a cuckold, held his hand. Well, on went he for a search, and away went I for foul clothes. 
But uh, mark the sequel, Master Brooke. I suffered the pangs of three several deaths. First, an intolerable flight to be detected by a jealous rotten bellwether, and next to be compassed, hilt to point, heel to head, and then to be stopped in like a strong distillation with stinking clothes that fretted in their own grease. Uh, think of that, Master Brook, think of that. A man of my kidney, uh, that I'm a subject to heat as butter. Man of continual dissolution and thaw. It was a miracle. I escaped suffocation. And in the height of this bath, when I was more than half stewed in grease like a Dutch dish to be thrown into the Thames and cooled glowing hot in that surge like a horseshoe. Think of that. Yes, he not. Think of that, Master Brook. <laughs> well... In good sadness, I'm sorry that, for my sake, you have suffered all of this. My suit, then, is desperate. You'll undertake her no more. Master Brook, I, I will be thrown into Etna, as I've been thrown into the Thames at I leave her thus. Her husband has this morning gone a-birding. I have received from her another embassy of meeting. Trix eight and nine is the hour, Master Brook. Tis past eight already, sir. Is it? Hmm. Oh, well, address me to my appointment. Uh, come to me at your leisure, and you shall know how I speed. And the uh, conclusion shall be crowned with your enjoying her. <laughs> Adieu! You shall have her, Master Brook. <laughs> Master Brook, you shall cook old Ford. <sighs> Is this a vision? Do I sleep? Is this a dream? Awake! Awake, Master Ford! There's a hole made in your best coat, Master Ford. This tis to be married? This to have linen and buck baskets? Well, I shall proclaim myself what I am. I will take the lecher. He's at my house. He cannot escape me. Tis impossible he should. He cannot creep into a half-penny purse or into a pepper box. But lest the devil that guides him should aid him, I will search impossible places. Though what I am I cannot avoid, yet to be what I would not shall not make me tame. If I have horns to make one mad, let the proverb go with me. I'll be horn mad! Ah, <laughs> oh, Mistress Ford, <laughs> thy sorrow hath eaten up my sufferance. <laughs> I see you are obsequious in your love, and I profess requital to a hair's breadth. But are you sure of your husband now? <laughs> He's a birding, sweet Sir John. <laughs> what ho, Gossip Ford, what ho? <laughs> Step into the chamber, <laughs> Sir John. <laughs> oh, oh, now, sweetheart. Is there anyone home with you? Nay, only my own people. Indeed. No, certainly. Speak louder. Truly, I am glad that there is no one else here with you. Why? Your husband is in his old loons again, <gasps> takes on so over yonder with my husband, rails against all married mankind, curses the daughters of Eve, whatsoever complexion they are, and so buffets his forehead, crying, Peer out, peer out, that any madness I have ever yet beheld was tameness, civility, and patience. In this distemper that he is in now, I am glad the fat knight is not here. Why does he talk of him? Of no one else but him. Swears the last time he searched the house, he was taken out in a basket and protests to my husband that he is here now, has called the men from their sport to make another experiment of his suspicion. It's as well the knight is not here. He will be seen in his own foolery. <laughs> well, how near is he, Mistress Page? <laughs> At street's end, he will be here anon. I am undone. <gasps> the knight is here. Oh. then you are shamed, and he is a dead man, 
Away with him, away with him. Better shame than murder. What shall I do? How shall I bestow him? Shall I put him into the basket again? No, I'll come no more in the basket. May I not go out any come? Unless Master Ford's brothers watch the door with their pistols. <laughs> if it were not so, you could have gone. But well, why well, make what you shall here? I do? What shall I do? I'll, I'll creep up into the chimney. Oh, there they always use for discharging their birding pieces. <laughs> <laughs> There's no hiding you in the house. Well, well, I shall go out then. If you go out under your own semblance, you die, Sir John. <laughs> Unless you go out disguised. <gasps> How might we disguise him? <laughs> My maid's aunt, the fat woman of Brentford, has a gown above. It will serve him well. They are both the same size. <laughs> and there is her hat upstairs and her muffler too. Ooh. Run up, Sir John, run Go. up. <laughs> Go! Go! <laughs> Sweet Sir John. <laughs> I would my husband would meet him in this shape, for he cannot abide the woman of Brentford. He swears she's a witch, has forbade her my house, and has threatened to beat her. <laughs> oh, heaven guide your husband's cudgel to him, and the devil guide it afterwards. <laughs> but is my husband coming? In sadness he is, and speaks of the basket. He has had intelligence. We'll try that, for I'll appoint my men to carry the basket again, to meet him at the door with it, as they did last time. Come, come, take it up. Oh, pray heaven are not full of hot night again. I hope not. <laughs> if it prove true, Master Page, have you any way then to unfool me again? Set down that basket, villain. Somebody call my wife. Oh, you pandily rascals! What? Wife, I say, come, come forth. Behold what honest clothes you send forth to bleaching. Oh, are you not ashamed? Let the clothes alone. I shall find you anon. Empty out the basket, I say. Oh, why, man, why? Master Page, as I am a man, there was one conveyed out of my house yesterday in this basket. Why then may he not be in there again? In my house I am sure he is. My intelligence is good. My jealousy is reasonable. Pluck me out all the linen. If you find a man there, he shall die a flea's death. He is no man. <clears throat> well, he's not here I seek for. No, nor nowhere else but in your brain. Help me search my house this one time. Ooh, what ho, good Mistress Page? Come you and the old woman down. My husband would into the chamber. Old woman? What old woman is that? Oh, nay, my maid's aunt of Brentford. <laughs> Which? Queen, an old cousin in Queen. Have I not forbid her in my house? She works by spells and by charms and by the figure. <laughs> come, you old hag, you witch. Come, come on, I say. Oh, nay, good sweet husband. Let him not strike the old woman. Come, Mother Pratt. Come, give me your hand. Oh, I'll prat her <laughs> out of my house. Out, you witch, you baggage, you polecat, you hag. Out, out. I'll fortune tell you. I'll conjure you. Are you not ashamed? I think you've killed the poor woman. <laughs> Nay, he will do it. Tis a goodly credit for you. Hang her, witch. Will you follow me? I beseech you, follow me. See but the issue of my jealousy. I'll obey his humour a little further. <laughs> he beat her most pitifully. <laughs> no, by the mass that he did not. He beat him most unpitifully, methought. <laughs> then I shall have the cudgel hallowed and hung o'er the altar. It has done meritorious <laughs> service. What think you? Shall we pursue him with any further revenge? No, I am sure the spirit of wantonness has been scared out of him, and I think he shall attempt us no more. Shall we tell our husbands how we have served him? Yes, I think we shall. Let us go. I'll warrant they'll have it 
publicly shaved. Yes. <laughs> we'll go to the forge and have it shaped. I'll not have it cool. Yes. And did he send you both these letters in an instant? Within a quarter of an hour. Pardon me, wife. <laughs> Henceforth do what thou wilt. I rather will suspect the sun with cold than thee with wantonness. <laughs> but let our plot go forward. Let our wives yet once again, to make us public sport, appoint a meeting with this old fat fellow, and then we can take him and disgrace him for it. There is no better way than what they spoke of. How? To send him word they'll meet him in the park at midnight? Fie, fie, he'll never come. Let us devise to bring him thither. There is an old tale that Hearn the Hunter, sometime keeper here in Windsor Forest, doth at winter time at midnight walk around the oak with his great rustling horns, blasts the tree, takes the cattle, makes milk kind yield blood, shakes the chains in such a hideous and dreadful manner. Mm. Why, there want not many who do fear to walk in deep of night by this hern's oak. But what of this? Mary, this is our device, that Falstaff at that oak will meet with us. We'll all present ourselves, dishorn the spirit and mock him home to Windsor. <laughs> 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 Night. The Windsor cloth has struck twelve. Minute draws on. No, no, the hot blooded gods assist me. Remember, Jove, thou wast a bow for thy Europa. Love set on thy horns. <laughs> oh, powerful love, <laughs> that in some respects makes a beast a man, and in some others, a man, a beast. <laughs> For me, I am here a Windsor stag, and the fattest, I think, in the forest. <laughs> Send me a cool rut time, Jove, or else who can blame me to piss me tallow? <laughs> oh, who comes here? My doe? Sir John, art thou there, my dear? My male oh. dear. Oh, <laughs> my doe with a black scut. <laughs> Let the sky rain potatoes. Let it thunder to the tune of green sleeves. Hail kissing comforts and snow ringos. Let there come a tempest of provocation. I will shelter me here. <laughs> <laughs> Good mistress pages, come with me, sweetheart. Oh, oh divide me like a bribe book. <laughs> Eat your horns. <laughs> I'll keep my sides to myself. And the shoulders for the fellow of the walk. <laughs> <laughs> and my horns, I bequeath thy husband. <laughs> <laughs> I pray come. Hold up this jest no higher. <laughs> Well, Sir John, what think you now of Windsor wives? Oh. <laughs> See here, husband, do not these fair yokes become the forest better than the town? Who's a cuckold now, Master Brook? Falstaff's a knave, a cockledly knave, Master Brook. Here are his horns, Master Brook. He hath enjoyed nothing of Ford but his buck basket, his cudgel, and twenty pounds of money that shall be paid, Master Brook. His horses are arrested for it, Master Brook. Sir John, we have had ill luck and we could never meet. I will never take you for my love again. But I will always count you my dear. <laughs> I do begin to perceive that I am made an ass. Aye, and an ox too. Both the proofs are extant. 
What, Sir John? I th do you think that you would have had the scruples from our heart to give to hell and the devil would given, have given you as our delight? <laughs> what? A hodge pudding? A bag of flax? A puffed man. Old, cold, withered and of intolerable <laughs> entrails. And as slanderous as Satan. And, and as poor as Job. And, and as and, wicked as his and, wife. And, <laughs> and, and given to fornications and taverns and wine and sack and, and mesligans and, and drinkings and swearings and starings. Pribbles and prevels. Oh, I see I am your theme. <laughs> You're the start of me. Well, I am disjected. Use me as you will. Come, husband. Let us all go home and see to the sport or a fire. Mm. And Sir John and all. Huh? Mm. Let it be so, Sir John. For to Master Brooke you shall yet hold your word, for he tonight shall lie with Mistress Ford. And listen to me song And I shall tell you plainly Then the injury and wrong That constantly I do sustain Through my unhappy life The witch that brought me to great pain By my unquiet wife She never lends a bawling A tongue it is so loud For always she'll be railing And will not be controlled For she the breach is still will wear Although it breeds my strife If I were now a bachelor I'd never have a wife. Sometimes I go in the morning about me daily work. Me wife, she will be snorting, and in her bed she'll lurk. Until the chimes to go at eight, and she'll begin to wake. Her morning's draught will spice it straight to clear her eyes she'll take. Amongst her own comrades, and then she falls a boozing with all her merry blades. Well,